So, are you ready to start creating heritage scrapbooks, personal history scrapbooks, or just scrapbooks of this past summer's activities? Well, it's time to jump in and use my favorite program, Photoshop Elements, to start creating your scrapbooks. The fastest way that I have discovered to create scrapbook pages is to use templates. Templates are a lot like recipe cards only for scrapbooking. They might be called page maps or sketches. Today, I'm going to show you how to use a template in Photoshop Elements. So let's hop down to the computer. You can find templates for Photoshop Elements in a number of different places. One of my favorites is by No Rhymer Reason. The designer is Amber Rhymer and she, you just go to her website and you find a template that you like, like this one right here and you order it from Etsy, and sometimes she has them for free, but support her because she's a fabulous designer. You save it to your computer, and then you upload it into Photoshop Elements. But while we're also on the internet, let's hop over to another resource for digital products because we'll need those later when we start decorating our pages. Now we're over to a fabulous digital scrapbooking store called Sweet Shop and you can find kits and templates and all sorts of things to help decorate your scrapbook pages. I found this kit. I can order it, download it to my computer, and have it ready to go when I hop over to Photoshop Elements. Let's do that now. So now I have chosen a template from No Rhyme or Reason, and I have opened up the file in Photoshop Elements. So let me tell you the number one thing when you use a template. When you pay for it, it's not a one-time thing. You can use it again and again and again. So if you think, wow, that was $2 for a template, that's pretty pricey. No, you can use it multiple times and really get your money out of your template. What I want you to do is save a copy of your file and rename it and put it in completely different folders so that you know you're not working on your template. Now that we have the template opened and it's a saved copy, let me introduce you to a template. All of these boxes, you'll notice if I click on them, little boxes go around them, around that one, and on the right, a highlight changes. So you know that you are on a photo layer. Some other thing, this dark gray area between, that's going to be a background paper. The white paper can be another background paper, so you could have two background papers. The strip on the side is an opportunity to have an embellishment, and then you can see where you can put journaling and a title. Now, in this particular template, the writing is not an area you can edit, and over in the layer side over here where the blue highlight is, it says delete this. So you delete that, make it a go away. So the first step in working with a template to do it quickly is to add your photos. So what you want to do is open up your photos. They will appear in the photo tray along the bottom of the template. And then you're going to use your mouse to drag a picture into the area that you want to place your photo. The first thing you need to do is to click on the layer where the photo you want to be placed is. I want to start with a very large photo spot. One of the tricks to using a template is that you can snap a photo into the spot where you want the photo to be. In order to do that, you need to make sure that you click on the photo spot that you're working with. I suggest you start with the largest one first, so we're going to start with this one right here, and notice it's highlighted in blue, so I'm on the photo. To move an image from the photo tray onto your layout, use your left mouse button, click and hold and drag it to your layout, and then let go. Now, is that how you want your picture to look? Absolutely not. The next thing you need to do is click and hold and move it over to the spot where you want it to be. When you want your photo to be snapped into one of those boxes, you need to learn the keys 
control plus G or command plus G. And watch what happens. Control G, it snaps into that box. If I control G again, it goes away. If I snap, press control G or command G again, it snaps into that box. So now what I need to do is to resize it, but luckily I don't have to finagle the picture to try to match up to those photo spots. I just snap it in and then it's an automatic frame that allows me to know exactly what the picture is going to look like without constantly altering the photo sizes. This is a quick way to get your photos to look great and that's why I love templates. So let's get this photo size to fit the space just a little bit better. What you need to do is you need to click on these handles. You see these little boxes that are, go around your picture? Click on that and then drag it in. I can drag it out, I can drag it in, I can drag it out. You get the idea. So you just hold down your left mouse button um, after touching that corner and then let go. It will do that one more time, but I'll do it quicker this time. I'm going to add a photo up here at the top. I'm going to left mouse button on the photo that I want to go up there in that spot, drag it, and drop. Left mouse hold, holds it down onto the screen, release it, and now the photo is in the center. All of your embellishments, all of your back uh, paper, background paper, all of that will go to the center and then you need to move it around. So I'm going to move it up there to the top. Uh-oh, it's the wrong size. I'm going to control G. I got the edges trimmed off. I'm going to move it up a little bit. And now in that photo spot, you can always resize them. Click on the little handles down there. And notice you've got it selected when you have the check mark or the do not sign. Click on the um, center box, drag it up, and now that looks better. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of YouTube magic and show you what this layout looks when, like when all the photos are in place. So now that all of my photos are in place, the next thing you want to do is add your text to your layout. Now, Photoshop Elements is not a text editor, which is why I highly recommend that you write your journaling in a different application. In this case, I used OpenOffice, but you could use Apple Pages or Microsoft Word, whichever you have available. So here's my text that I'm going to use, and I'm going to move it by highlighting the section that I need. I'm going to Control C, Command C. These are things that we all know how to do. Control C, copy. Control V paste over in Photoshop Elements. Let's go over there. The thing you need to know before you can put the Control V to get the uh, text pasted into Photoshop is you have to tell Photoshop that you want to use a text tool. So over here on the left, you have all of your options. Let me zoom in for a moment and you can see the text tool that we're going to highlight. Watch what happens when I click on that capital T for text. It's highlighted and I will show you in a minute uh, the tools related to text. With that text highlighted down here at the bottom, it gives us all of the things we need in order to write our text, but we need to draw a box for that copy text to go into. But I also want to change the color, otherwise I'm going to have white text on white paper and that's not going to work. So click down here where it says color. And then I'm just going to pick blue for right now and click OK. And now I'm going to draw a box, holding down my left mouse key. I start where the topmost part of where I want the box to be, drag it out, let go. And now I can hit Control V and paste the text. And now it's quite large. All you need to do is Control A. Command A to select all the fonts, all of the written words, and then change your font size. I'm going to make it about 12 and make it about 14. Once you have your photos and your text in place, it start, it's time to start having fun. And you, what you want to do is start by adding your background paper and then your decorations because you do not want your decorations to overpower the photos and the writing. So let me show you how to add background paper to your layout.
when we added photos, we would click on the boxes and then we would drag our photos there. In order to add background paper, we need to make sure we're clicking on the background. So we're going to click on this gray part right here. And I like this dark blue background. I'm going to click and hold, drag it up, and release. And guess what happens? That's right, it goes to the middle, but I want it on the left side. So I click and hold and drag it over. I don't need to resize it so I can let go. But wait, should I stretch the picture to make it fit? I wouldn't recommend it. Instead, grab another copy of it, drag and drop. It goes to the middle and you move it over. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close that paper. I'm done with it, goodbye, close your paper. And I want to add a second paper to this white paper to, because white's kind of boring, but it doesn't have any texture to it. So I'm gonna grab the second paper, the same thing that I did with adding a photo. Left click, drag, drag and drop, release. It goes to the middle, I move it over, press Control G, and it will snap into place. Now that it's snapped into place, can you read that writing? Right here, I'm clicking on it. Well, one of the solutions that you can do is to shorten that box. So I'm going to shorten that box, and then I'm going to change the font size, the font color. In future videos, if you want to see more precisely how I make all of these changes, then just leave a comment below and I'll be happy to make a video about the changes I made. I'm just trying to get us through this concept of adding to the template. So the next thing I'm going to do on this template is to add um, the other background paper and start adding decorations. I found a few decorative elements that I thought would look nice on the page. I'm going to put these in the vertical positions that the template had, and then I'm going to add one more decorative element, the state of Texas, just because the conference is in Texas and it would make the page look just finish it off. Remember, less is more when you're scrapbooking. So I have clicked and dragged my ribbon to the layout. Notice it's in the middle, but I wanted it to go vertical rather than horizontal. So I click on the corner cursor changes to two arrows pointing away from each other. If I grab that, all of a sudden that ribbon changes and then I can release it so it stops rotating, click on it again holding down with my left mouse key, and then I can move it over here to the side. I'm going to delete the lower layer, that template layer, I don't need that anymore. I don't have to clip anything to it, I could just make it disappear. And then I can do the same thing with my other um, decorative element, drag it to the middle, find the corner on the side where it has the two arrows pointing away from each other, hold down my left mouse key while I'm rotating it, let go, and then I click on it again, hold it as I'm moving it to the right, let go, click on the layer below that was from the template, and delete it. And now I have those elements in place. The final thing that I want to show you is dragging an embellishment for resizing it, you've done it before, so just click on this little Texas. Click on the Texas, drag it to the beginning. Now here's my problem. The Texas should be above the pictures, not below the pictures. If you do that, you need to come over to the right side of your screen, left click on the layer, and notice now I can move it up and down. Now it's above a few more photos, and now it's above all of the photos. Again, get that handle on the side, shrink it, turn it, move it, and put it in place. So that's the quick version of adding photos and background paper and embellishments and writing to your layout. Here's my final version of this layout. I added a little title that says Texas Conference, added a few more Texas little embellishments, and now I can prepare this file for printing in a photo book. So that's a quick and dirty way of using a template in Photoshop Elements. If you would like a video that slows any of those steps down, please be sure to leave a comment in the section below. 
If you really like videos on scrapbooking, then make sure you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your friends. I'm Devin Noelle Lee, and this is Family History Fanatics.